Hello, I'm Dava, and I hope it's working this time. I just recorded 50 minutes. OBS had decided the microphone was going to be turned off for the start. Um, I feel quite emotional after the last video. I'm here to talk to you today about the Cirque de Folly that is Brexit. Now, the idea that the English could promise Northern Ireland that they would keep peace in the 90s and then just go right ahead and decide to, to drag everybody out of the it was Wales and all, you know, um, drag everybody out of the EU, well, those two ideas aren't compatible for a start. You can't have a hard border in Northern Ireland and keep the Good Friday Agreement. The two things are incompatible. And you can't leave the EU and no have a hard border with an EU country because the EU will only permit it. And rightly so, they, they, they need to protect the integrity of their laws. And they do that with borders. If you think about the way that, you know, the, uh, Russia has been pressuring them, they, they, they went in, into the EU market. And the EU's will cheat no. It is delusional to think that this is not a problem. It's not a problem of Northern Ireland's making or Ireland's making. It's a promise that England made to Northern Ireland in the 90s. In the first video, I had loads more about this. Um, I, I will talk about it. So, Scotland's got its own history. Since we did, the Union has never worked for us. I mean, we joined the Union and we fought against it up until 1745. And then in 19, uh, sorry, 1750, the Highland Clearances begun. And all those lords all wanted sheep on their land and didn't want Scottish people, so all the Scottish people just left. Where did they go? They went to Canada! And they went to. I don't know run. Pacific's huge. New Zealand. And a lesser extent that they also went to, it's more the Irish and maybe the Welsh that went to Australia. And of course the English. Um, but uh, New Zealand is kind of opposites. This is kind of the English part and this is kind of the Scottish part. It's upside down. <laughs> But just kind of cool, I, I like that. Um, so, let's get back around. Let's see if we can get, get rated up. There was also uh, the Highland potato farming, where the English sent up, this was, um, 
The, the Highland Clearances lasted up until 1860. So that's 110 years. Um, the Highland Potato Farming lasted for about 10 years. And that was from just after the, the last rebellion. That was 1746 until 1756. So for 10 years, Scotland, you know, farmers were getting the rough end of the stick. You know, across the jaw, quite literally, they were getting pe British, quote unquote, English soldiers coming up and they, they're saying, oh look, we can't pay tax because my wife just died and, and all my wains are all starving and, and the, the, the soldiers are like that. As if we care, get off this land or we'll shoot you in the face. So they left. Um, this this union has not worked for Scotland. Um, Scotland pays in uh, 40 billion in tax alone, not including oil, which I'll come to later, hopefully I remember, and um, gets out in the block grant 30 billion. Now if you were to move the border here, suddenly a lot of options become open. Now, England and Wales, they would get what they voted for. And I'll, I'll also mention that the Cornish and the Dunnone, right, see, that's, that's the wrong line, right. It's fair, do, it's fair bit here. Right, see this, this nape, right. This is, um Kernow, right, which is the old name for Cornwall. Uh, they're a uh, Gael Gaul people like the Welsh, the Irish, Scottish. Something I've often felt that they should be their own principality. Just down here. But they, they seem quite happy, so more power to them. If you're happy, you're happy. I don't believe there's any Manx left. That's just a personal opinion. I just think all oh, the English all went there and there's nothing left. Um, no. What would it practically do? I'm a wee bit up, you know, juggling my points here because I did 50 minutes on this which was fairly well laid out. Um, Putting a hard border here keeps the Northern Irish happy and keeps Ireland happy. Keeping Scotland and Northern Ireland in the EU keeps them happy because that's what we voted for. Um, letting England make their own trade deals with other nations, that keeps them happy. Um, being able to shuttle goods. So if you if you have a plant on the border, right, that's a lot easier than having to mess about with um, this kind of stuff. You're already there. All you're doing is driving across. You're no having loads of waiting times and, and all this to, to hop on a ferry. And what you can do is sh what I call shuttle goods across the border making sure that they comply while they're still in your country. So what you do is you make sure that they are uh, marked export only to EU and then there's no, you know, you don't lose money for it. You're still doing the same amount of trade. Um, there might be taxes and stuff, customs tax. But um, that that's up to them to work out. But as far as Scotland goes, if you had plants that were already 
uh, complying with um, the EU uh, regulations, then they can just, excuse me, they can just go, and just go, look, there we go, which would make Scotland um, have more money in the first place. I mean, in England, if you've got a business and you think, well, I don't quite want to go all the way to France and be governed by the French because I don't entirely trust them. Well, I kind mean, of feel the same way about English, but you know, the English might be like, well, you know, I can just stick out a, a, a business on the border and then it's already complying to EU rules and it's already in an EU country and I don't have to worry about tariffs, I don't have to... <sighs> but if you wanted to keep it in England I suppose there would, there would be tariffs. Right. Oh, I what would they know? In the last video I said about, I don't trust English with politics. No, it's not that, that so much that I'm, um, anti English per se. I just have this fundamental belief that if you put polit, if you mix the cocktail of English with politics, what pops out the other side is evil. And you, oh, there are countless, countless times that this has happened. Um, in the last video, just as man is a man in a suit came on from, um, which is one of the songs that you're listening to right now. Um, man in a suit come on and I said oh well that's nicely timed because David Cameron back when that, th Charlie wrote that song and it was about David Cameron putting money abroad um, and it was, in all the, it was popular in all the papers, a really popular story. Did anything happen to him for all the, the tax evasion? Avoidance, same thing. No, no paying into the system. No, nothing happened to him. And he's probably getting a good tan now. Sunning it up in some beach with all his extra money. The idea of the hypocrisy of the English, that they want to take back their laws, but then turn around and go online and tell Scottish nationalists, no, 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 you're no entitled to your own country. Does, the, the hypocrisy is crazy. And I mean crazy in the way of exuberant. Must name day in the whole thing. Then again, talking English at the end of a sentence to sound intelligent. I want rid of that brainwashing. I want rid of that brainwashing. <sighs> Scotland has a load of uh, natural resources. And oh, the stuff we could do. I want independence for Scotland. I can't 
I listed all the re I listed all the reasons in the last video about the hard border. Right, I'll try and hit some of the points because I'm forgetting a lot of stuff here. <coughs> Having a hard border between Scotland and England, um, well, that, right, I'll, I'll have to include that right now. The English used to complain to the EU that um, they were suffering from something called the Rotterdam effect. When English UK goods, quote unquote, um, went to um, the EU and then get transported internationally, they were counted towards the EU. And the quote unquote UK were quite uh, unhappy about that English, right? Well, I believe that that's what's happening with Scotland. Scotland's exporting something to England and then it's getting exported somewhere. It's going to a packing plant where they're just putting it in, in the boxes and then it's going somewhere else for export and it's getting marked as English goods. So then it makes it look like Scotland's biggest trading partner is England which I hard Colour me sceptical. No. How does this solve all the problems? And it does, it solves every single problem. Right? Putting the border here. Well, for one, I couldn't care less about going out in England. So... And there's a, a lot of Scottish nationals would rather... I, I mean, I've paid to avoid England. I don't want to go to that country. I've lived there twice. Never, I, I, I never want to be in that country again. Um, how does this put a smile on everybody's face right now? The Irish backstop is, is fundamentally incompatible what the you know what the English promised to Northern Ireland in 1997 was it 98 um, they can't make a border because it breaks that agreement and they can't leave the EU without creating a border so you know, and this isn't Northern Ireland that's created this problem, or Ireland. So how do you solve it? Move the border to Scotland. Give Scotland a status much like Ireland had in the Irish Free State. So that means that we're still tied to the Union for, say, another 20 years, right? But having pretty much 95% autonomy, including our, our own money, our own um, immigration laws, our own, to some degree, trade deals. I, I could really see Scotland joining the Nordic Council, but it would depend on what England said. See, see what I mean about the 5%? And what you're doing is, you're giving Scotland the problem of Northern Ireland. And you're seating a nationalist, I mean, like I said in the last video, 45% of Scotland's population believe that Westminster has failed as a system so much that they are willing to risk independence and go it alone. That's a fact. Polls have they moved. Still 45% and some is 55% some polls. We've been hovering over the last couple of months over the 50% mark. But let's just bring it down to the 45% who are definitely seeing Flip Westminster, 
get lost. Well, you're giving them something they want. England and Wales, you're giving them something they want as well, because they can go away and make trade deals and do whatever it is that they want. And Northern Ireland gets to stay as Northern Ireland like it is for the now. And they, what happens is, you say to Scotland, well, you've got 20 years to decide. You say to Northern Ireland, you've got 20 years to decide. What are you going to do with the 20 years? Because if Scotland chooses to leave, we can't, de- we can't keep this commitment anymore. And what that does is it calms everybody down. You say to Scotland, look, we like having your oil as a guarantor for the pound. So what we want you to do, you can make your own currency and peg it to the pound and we'll help you do that. The pound Scots. And we'll help you with, with trading mechanisms and all this. And exchange rates and you know all this, right? You just make sure that the oil is there to guarantee, be guaranteed to the pound. That way nobody loses any money. Like I said about good shuttling hour or having um, businesses on the Scottish side. You know, uh, what I would do is I would withdraw all of the Scottish MPs from Westminster. And when a law was to be passed across the whole quote unquote United Kingdom, um, the Prime Minister would have to meet the First Minister and talk it out. And if they never got what it, whatever it was the English wanted, then it's a no. You have to accept the no. That's it. Um, if it's an eye, then the law will get rolled out across Scotland. As well as England and Wales and Northern Ireland. Like I said, it's basically giving Scotland the problem of Northern Ireland and then giving Northern Ireland 20 years to decide what they want to do with themselves. Do they want to join the Republic of Ireland? Do they want to go alone? Do they want to join Scotland? Do they want to um, be part of the Union of England and Wales? Do they want to be a part of that? In 20 years, I am... God in heaven have mercy on me. I... I hope, most definitely, by 20 years we're we're away. And the feeling is, more and more people are changing for no yes, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. My friend, I'll not mention him, was a unionist, and he voted to leave. Now, he told me last week that because of the way it had worked out with the EU um, and he saw how much Scotland badly wanted to be part of the EU he said that's no right Scotland should be in charge of its own affairs that's what he said to me he said I'm going to vote for independence next time so there you go. I don't suppose I could get all this all done in 23 minutes and so many seconds. <laughs> but what it does is it puts a smile on everybody's face. It puts a smile on English faces because they get to go and that's what they voted for. Welsh as well. The Northern Irish get to stay in it and they get to stay somewhat part of the Union 
in which I realised that there are difficulties there, but at the same time, you're not exactly breaking the promise to them because you, the the piece is more important. And I said something right at the end of the last video that right, I said. I want independence for Scotland first and foremost. Um, I also talk about Charles Stuart Parnell, the father, or a father at least, of uh, Irish nationalism. A great, great man. Um, anyway, uh, I believe in an independent Scotland. Um, I want it, it burns within me, I want it every day, and I, I can't, I can't state that enough, you know, but for my Irish brothers and sisters, whether they be Northern Irish or Southern, I don't care, whether you be Unionist or Nationalist, whatever you are, I love you enough to put up with this crappy union for another 20 years. So, if they're saying, if English are going like, look, you can't hold an order referendum for another 20 years. Right. Fair enough to, to help out. And I mean, there was be a load of nationalists. It, it, even, <laughs> I mean, if you're Irish and a unionist, you would not believe how many nationalists that would support you. Scottish nationalists. You're our brothers and sisters, whoever you are. And we love you. And we'll part with this crap union for another 20 years if it helps you out and helps you get sorted. So like I'm saying, It puts a smile on everybody's face. Northern Ireland gets to be Northern Ireland. You, you don't have to leave the Union per se. Um, you become part of a semi-union with Scotland. And... There's that. If the Northern Irish just flat out just refused that, then you're, you're right down to the bone of you need to break the, the Good Friday Agreement. You have to man up, as it were, or woman up. You have to person up and just grit your teeth and let the troubles come back. And if you're a unionist, then you're advocating all the violence that follows and then you're causing the problem. There's no easy solution once you defuse it. So looking up at the way you're just moving the border between Scotland and England and gain Scotland the power that it desperately thirsts for over its own state of affairs will not impact you as a Northern Irish person. And you get a lot of pros of being in two unions at once. So I hope, I hope the microphone is what this time. <laughs> I was much more organised the first time even though I, I do admit I dithered on for a while. I went into depth about Irish nationalism and well no, no that way but I was just talking about the parallels between that and, and Scottish nationalism. And how I admire um, the Irish in, in many ways. Um, I, I talked about uh, Queen Victoria and how she made the middle class in Scotland for the first time feel, you know, didn't he feel unowned? Unowned? I mean, the, the average people, you know, they, we've always felt owned, but, um, you know, the middle class and during Queen Victoria's, you know, made them feel loved, you know, and that was 
maybe that slowed us down for getting that. You know, the nationalism really taking hold. Uh, with Queen Elizabeth being very much an English English queen. Um, I'm not saying Victoria was not but she spent quite a lot of time in Scotland. You know. Um, aye, this this seems like. I mean, I said this. It's like a being with a newspaper hitting me in the face. How obvious this is. Why don't you just move the border? Why don't you just move the border? Why don't you just move the border? Keep Scotland more power over itself. And then job done. I think it's English pride that they like own in Scotland. But saying that is kind of defeating some of the hope that an English person might listen to this, an English politician might listen to this idea and take it as their own. Because flip knows Scotland doesn't have any power in the negotiations. For being inventor of the modern world, we need to invent our, our way out of this. <laughs> Oh man! Oh man in a suit with David Cameron. Life in his hands. People topping themselves because because their benefits get get, get cut. Wasn't it just Theresa May that did that? Anyway, <sighs> you have a good day, whoever you are. Even if you're English, if you're whoever you are. I wish you nail. <laughs>